Well, there's a lot of a lot of people trying to figure out how to tokenize assets right now. And I see that in conversations. I think I think Anthony, we're kind of at this place where no one wants to get fired for building out like a web three app in their in these financial organizations. So they're playing very carefully, but they're they're like slow and steady. They're not getting out of the space. And I think with this latest kind of cycle here, we're gonna see that speed up. All right, guys, bang, bang, we've got Josh here. Uh, Josh, blockchains get invented. Satoshi Nakamoto puts out into the world. Everyone gets really excited about Bitcoin. Uh, and at first, people are just buying, holding, transacting back and forth. Seems like everything's great in the world. Then all of a sudden, Vitalik comes around. He's like, well, what if I take this blockchain idea and I add smart contracts? And we get this like, explosion of new use cases, new mm -hmm. chains, et cetera. Today, there's a lot of people who are coming to the conclusion, oh, I can look on the blockchain. It's a public ledger. There's information there. There's details. There's insights. What are is on the blockchain? Like, what are people using these blockchains to capture from an information standpoint? And what are they doing with the information? Yeah, great, great question. So I think fundamentally there's transactions on the blockchain, but those transactions aren't just like wallet to wallet activity, me sending crypto to someone else. It could be an application sending crypto to another application. It could be an application investing. You know, in another protocol, um, could be a bot, hap, you know, doing something on chain. And so, you know, people are uh, um, interested in what what's happening there. Like, where's the market moving? Um, you know, what, where, where, where's the, where's, you know, what, one of the things that's happened recently is I think like capital has moved to kind of these, what are called layer twos that are on Ethereum, these um, more or less shards, if you will, that are, that are sitting on top of Ethereum. And a lot of people are looking at that activity right now and trying to understand where ETH is going or rather where the rest of the market is going. When you look at the trading use case, I think that that becomes like very obvious. Are there yep. other things like what, maybe like what's like the most esoteric thing you've seen someone doing mm. with this information? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly trading is is interesting. I'm, I always say that like, you know, Web3 is kind of like this, this is a movement, right? And it's about organizing people in a way that's fair and meaningful to them, right? And so I don't think it's just about trading. It's really about ownership at the end of the day. Like people, um, people in applications are, you know, investing just their time in these protocols too. They're getting more, um, you, we've seen uh, lately a lot of airdrops happening in space, you know, and those airdrops are going to early validators, they're going to contributors that were, that were, um, you know, contributing to the, to the GitHubs and committing things and committing, um, even fixing typos in the documentation and people are being incentivized and being paid out for their contributions. And so what you really have in here is you're having a capital system behind the open source movement. And that's really something that really has those two things really haven't connected in the past. I think when these companies uh, or these users start to come into the ecosystem, um, it feels like initially there's no need for them to have the data if you're just a user of the product, right? If you're a user of an app or, or whatever. But the in, uh, invention or the the innovation around points and other yeah. things like that seem to now drive the average user wants to know like what are the actions i should be taking uh how many points do i get for it is there a potential monetary reward at some point like the gamification almost drives more like on-chain interest and, and like uh necessity for the information is that yeah. is that how you see it yeah absolutely it's it's actually great because i think people that maybe wouldn't have gotten as deep into the technology. They're trying to figure out how things are working. They're trying to get involved. They're trying to make meaningful contributions. And that's just that's just a great thing in general. Walk me through what you guys are doing from like an actual product standpoint. How does the product work? Yeah. So at the end of the day, like let me give you a little background of what we do at at, at QuickNote. I've been working on um more or less core infra for web three for almost five years now. So QuickNote is a is a platform where we connect builders to chains and we help those builders scale their blockchain based applications. We also, um, when I say builders, those builders could be anyone from major exchanges to NFT traders to hedge funds that are trying to pull data off chain. 
And we basically help them build out their applications, access data, make transactions, and we support um, more or less, more than forty, more than uh, twenty-five chains now to to do that. And so, we have this new product that we've just announced last week. It's called Streams, and I love to use this analogy. You think about like if you're a builder or anyone that's trying to research transactions on chain, it's almost like you're going to the post office and checking your PO box when. When you try to talk to that blockchain, you have there's a lot of work involved to do that. You have to query correctly. You have to kind of filter transactions. A lot of extra work in in doing that. It's very similar to driving to the post office and you know unlocking your PO box, see if you have mail, then maybe you take that mail home and do something with it, pay a bill or something like that. With streams, we're um, making that process a lot more efficient, and it, it's almost like just getting an email. And then your bill is paid automatically from some automated uh, automated function. And so I, I think, you know, this is a great, like the place we're at in the market right now is where it's getting easier and easier through tools like what we offer at QuickNode to do things in this Web3 space. It's almost like been demystified now and that there's there's a whole set of tooling and like dev tooling that makes it very easy to, to do market research or build an application. And as the technology around streams is making this more like email, right? Kind of the the efficiency of it. What new mm-hmm. use cases are unlocked, or like what do you see people actually doing now that they couldn't do before? Mm, I think it's really about a lower cost, a lower barrier to entry. You know, we had seen um, it's it's very similar to kind of like the early days of of startups in in kind of like the Web one era. The you know around the like nineteen ninety nine two thousand days, like you used to have to go like build your whole data center. Right, as a startup, and you had uh, like the pet, the the you know the pet e-commerce stores and the grocery delivery services that ended up failing. They spent huge amounts. They spent like ten million dollars in their data centers without any users at all. And it's kind of what we where we started with uh, with blockchain infra, but on a much lower scale than that. And today, um, whether you're, I see teams of like two and three pe- people, like teams that are building like multi-million dollar protocols because there's just the, the tooling is easy, the capital's there, and that really the best product in the space wins. And so I think at the end of the day, like what is Web3 really doing for the world? It's making entrepreneurship easier, raising capital easier, getting users easier through like monetizing, like we talked about airdrops before. So that's pretty exciting. And on those airdrops, are there things that you all can do in reverse? So right now people can look at the blockchain, they can go ahead and they can tell what's going on there. But are there things that you can do to help the actual protocols or the airdroppers uh, in terms of this connectivity? Mm, yeah, that's actually a, a use case that we see. Uh, chains do use our info to kind of pull that. They can look at what addresses are communicating. Is the address deploying a contract? Is it transferring assets? Is it actually consuming gas on the network? Um basically spending money. So we absolutely help chains with with that use case. And they're pulling it just to figure out like how many points someone has and, and to mm-hmm. get the airdrops or are they pulling it for different reasons? Uh, they can, I mean, it's, it's, it's to know, I think at the end of the day, they're doing it from, like if you're a chain, you can use our infra to, to figure out your point system. Of course, we wouldn't know what points are going to what addresses, but they're also using our infra to kind of power their block explorers is another use case or, um, in some cases, we have so, several large uh, top five chains that use us for their bridging infrastructure as well. And in the situation where you are watching uh, kind of almost two-way you know, information exchange, right? You've got the projects that are getting the information mm-hmm. off the blockchain, and then you've got users that are doing it. How do you see this all playing out? moving forward. Like it's very obvious the AWS model, right? Where people are giving out compute. Um, and if you continue to see a rise in the need for compute, then AWS will continue to be valuable. This product almost has like multiple demand sides, right? You've got the the things that we've been talking about. Are there other use cases or other demand vectors that you guys see coming into the market over the next you know couple of years now that institutions are here um, and, and there's mm. just more money sloshing around? Yeah, 100%. I think one of the things that's really gone crazy on crypto Twitter recently that we've been a, we've taken a bet on in the in the past and, and continue to support is is around um, kind of this concept of like app chains, application based chains. And so to me. There's kind of like several terms floating around there that that you know, for lack of a better, for oversimplification, 
oversimplification mean the same thing. So you have app chains, you have rollups, and you have uh, more or less this kind of new new layer three terminology. What that generally means, I think applications or organizations can run their own chain in a much easier way than ever before. And so why would why would say like Delta Airlines maybe someday want to run their own chain? The reason is because is anyone using that chain would um, be consuming gas in that chain, which would be a new revenue stream for them, right? And so I think we're going into a future, and this is probably a, a definitely a many years down the road, where major corporations will move their reward systems to effectively a roll up that will settle on Ethereum or now Bitcoin. There's there's a layer twos launching on Bitcoin right now, and some have already existed. And uh, you could build your own kind of on-chain business application that settles on Bitcoin or Ethereum, and effectively, you know, you can you can monetize and incentivize your community through that through that mechanism. So what we're seeing is kind of like this this world where I think you have these public blockchains sitting at you know that they're they're almost like a public highway that everyone uses and owns more or less. And then you have kind of these private blockchains that are sitting on top of these public, this public infra that are going to be used by corporations, by enterprise applications, by um, you think about like even HR software, just like all the APIs that has to tie into or you have Plaid that connects banks to banks. And like that becomes a lot easier when you move when you move business on chain. So we say this at Quick Note all the time, like. We're huge believers in just like the on-chain economy. We definitely see business moving on chain and have pretty good pipeline up with our sales team around enterprises coming in and doing kind of these private blockchains right now. What do you see that people do differently on Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus maybe like a base or kind of the newer, you know, more popular uh, chains that have come on recently? Yeah. Yeah. So Bitcoin, um, it's it's definitely, I think the People just in the last few months have really started figuring out that you can use Bitcoin like uh, in some ways like Ethereum. So, you know, NFTs on Bitcoin has been interesting. Um, kind of early to say on around the, the layer twos on Bitcoin. On Ethereum, I always think about Ethereum as it's almost like a global supercomputer that's kind of owned by the whole world. And I think with a future of kind of these chains is to be more like a business to business chain. Like you think about Bitcoin, Ethereum, they eventually will be kind of like this public infra, but it's business to business. All the consumer, the retail activity is going to happen on layer twos. And that's kind of a, a well-documented thesis that's been validated now and continues. So like base runs on the OP stack and that that uh, optimism and uh, or that produces the OP stack runs on Ethereum. And so base is ultimately settling their transactions on Ethereum. So one way to think about it is users like FriendTech is a, social kind of um, D app that launched on base that um, those transactions are ultimately sitting on Ethereum. And so Ethereum is more or less becoming kind of like this B2B chain um, to these other, these other private and public chains like base. When you see base, it is part of Coinbase. Mm -hmm. Obviously public market investors are interested in Coinbase. Uh, they would like to predict what the exchange revenue, the custody revenue, now potential base revenue is. Is QuickNode the ability like gives them the ability to now evaluate what's going on on base and try to back into like revenue that then could be used to construct part of you know the next earnings report type thing? Today's episode is brought to you by Supra. If you're building anything in Web3 or crypto, you likely need oracles and verifiable randomness too. Supra's offering the fastest oracles and DVRF free for 12 months at supra.com slash pomp for a limited time. Super delivers the freshest Oracle price feeds across 50 plus blockchains. Be it current critical price levels or liquidation triggers, beat your competition to the punch with Supra. It's as good as having the first mover advantage on every price update. Supra is more secure, easier to integrate, and runs on up to 12x lower gas per feed than other Oracles. So you'll want to bank on this 12 months free offer as soon as possible. If you're just listening and know any builders, you can earn $1,500 by letting them know about this deal. They can get the fastest oracles for free for 12 months, and you get $1,500 for every referral. Visit supra.com slash pomp to learn more. That's S-U-P-R-A dot com slash pomp. Yes, as long as Coinbase has moved applications kind of like on chain, 
as long as they've taken some of those core processes that they have internally, maybe running on AWS. And I think this is very much in their vision is to move that part of their business on chain. Then QuickNode provides the tooling in order to, to construct those you know, reports and understand what's really happening on the chain. But could I, like, for example, could I use QuickNode to say Coinbase's revenue from base is going to be X with some high degree of probability because QuickNode allows, Quick allows me to see how much transactions are being done, uh, maybe how much gas or, or equivalent, you know, is being captured. And I can start to, like, do some math and build a model. Uh, and again, I won't be 100% accurate, but I could probably come pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is that is how our customers are are using it today. Right. And we don't give you like the you have to do some work on the development side to kind of construct your model, if you will. We don't like model it for you, but the data that we have would be used in that model. We'd give you easy and fast access to that data. And then what about like um, altcoin issuers uh, for ETFs or even the ETF issuers themselves? Like if you know the wallet addresses, can you then start to use QuickNode to get better insights in terms of what uh inflows are or you know what their potential fee structures could look like yeah absolutely yeah we don't have we don't tell you whose wallet address is we don't have that information but if you did know the the address you could absolutely use our our streams product to effectively every time that address like say buys more bitcoin you would get like an instant notification think of it as a push notification on your phone that told you that 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 address had, you know, bought more Bitcoin or bought more Ethereum or, you know, maybe uh, moved assets to another address as they kind of diversify across multiple addresses. So developers and, you know, builders of these things, like they're they're using this technology and this tooling in order to, to thankfully make better applications and um, automate more of their uh, processes internally to, to do that. Got it. And then um, with streams, what are the things that people can now do uh, when you have that real time ability, right? And kind of this, you know, you use that email uh, example earlier that from an investing standpoint, isn't just trading the coins, but maybe trading some of these other assets. And the reason I ask this is uh, I have a personal, um, I don't know, maybe conviction or, or mm-hmm. like prediction mm-hmm. that a huge part of what today is considered traditional financial investing, look at the balance sheet, look at the P&L, try to back into, you know, what is the, mm-hmm. um, you know, EPS, all, all these things. Now, if we have real-time data and we can see what's happening on chain, man, that should make me a way better public market investor for the subset of stocks that will be related here. Yeah. So yeah, what are the absolutely. things that you guys see, you know, with just streams in general that now people are able to do that, that could help them in that uh, kind of pursuit? Well, yeah, there's one there's one use case that comes to mind just off the top of my head, and that streams pushes the data to you. So I, I used that analogy earlier of getting the email, right? And so the basically, like, all these transactions are in something called the memory pool. Think of it as kind of like this cloud sitting above, above where the pending transactions are. Like... What traders care about is like the second something actually is considered on chain, they want to know about it. And so instead of you having to go ask like the Bitcoin nodes or the Ethereum nodes what's happening, we're telling you like in microseconds that that activity is now part of the chain. And so it's almost like a high frequency trading use case that we would that is enabled through this new product that we offer. What are you most excited about on the product roadmap? So like we're talking about what you guys have already released, kind of what's already out there now, but like what are the things that you guys want to build or are in the process of building that you're really excited about? Yeah, you know, so one of the things I think that I'm, one of the reasons I work at QuickNode and I love I love this company is because I think like for the last couple of years, we had certainly in 2021, we had a lot of hype coming into crypto in general. We had like all-time highs, which hopefully we're, we're getting there right now. Um, again, but, you know, traditional business kind of stalled at moving on chain. And so I think, you know, from like, if you think about where QuickNode sits in the market, we have companies that are coming to us and be like, we want, we have a Web3 strategy, help us figure out what to do next, how to use this technology, how to build applications on chain. And so I'm most bullish about bringing traditional businesses, making this technology easy for them to use and kind of fit the models and, and the development environments that they're already used to building, basically make it risk-free. 
um, as much as possible. And that's what we've seen today. We have with several Fortune 100 companies working with us right now to kind of build products and chains in the space, which is so exciting. So to me, mass adoption doesn't really happen until traditional business feels like it's less risky and easier to kind of move their applications to blockchain-based systems. And that's what we're seeing today. So that's what I'm most bullish on. We have a lot of products that kind of help enable that. But I think, you know, like it starts with platforms like QuickNode that where these companies come and they they figure it out and we have a great you know team that can help them guide them through that process as well and then in terms of the team that you guys have built so far where do they come from are they like web yeah. native you know are they like young people are they super experienced from web 2 mm. we're gonna like large social media companies what which where do they come from yeah great question I, we have a great mix man we we have people from aws from digital ocean people that kind of got cut their teeth in crypto and web 3 and our team is truly global. I love this kind of, you probably see this a lot on your podcast, but you know, our team is truly like global, decentralized, if you will. We have people from, you know, Europe, North America, India, et cetera, a Asia Pacific as well, Japan. Um, it's so amazing to kind of see all like this builder culture that's that's truly global. And, you know, me being an American, I, I obviously, uh, I think you know so much of the tech ecosystem has been based in America. And it's it's amazing to see kind of builders from all over the world getting in full time and making stuff happen in this space. So it's been great. And then what about like the ecosystem or or the industry in general? What are you most excited about heading into what many people think is, you know, a much bigger bull market? What are milestones you're looking for or uh, things that you see um, as kind of, you know, accomplishments that lay ahead? Yeah. Yeah. So good question. I think kind of to my earlier point around traditional business moving on chain, like one obstacle is, is really has been around gas fees. And so like, if you think about like replacing a database and just using like an on, just using a blockchain instead of a database, it's like, you can't charge every time you write to that database, you can't charge like a $1 fee, right? You know, for most use cases. And so I think just like in the last six months, we really, really unlocked kind of these gasless chains and these gasless use cases on the roll up tech. And that's going to help kind of move this traditional business on chain. So in, in terms of, I, I know we, we talk a lot about new tech in the blockchain space but we really haven't unlocked like the tech we needed until like the last six months, in my opinion, at least it wasn't to a place where it could be maturely used by, you know, a major enterprise, major fortune, fortune 100 company. And now we have it. So that is probably going to really, I I'm, I'm very bullish on the next few years here. I think we're still getting started. We're still in our infancy as kind of a crypto and web three ecosystem. And so we're going to start seeing, you know, major companies and, you know, come into the space and and put, you know, make their own stable coins, move their rewards based systems on chain, do clean energy credits, all of the above. So it's going to be great. And what are the areas that people are excited about you think maybe are overhyped or, you know, don't have as much uh, kind of forward momentum as uh, uh, as others think? Well, I think, you know, I think <laughs> good question. Good question. Um, overhyped. I mean, you know, I think obviously there's been a lot of, um, I'm a, I'm a fan of NFTs. I think we got a little carried away with some of the NFT valuations in, in the past, I guess, I guess at the end of the day, like, you know, me, I'm, I have a hard time believing certain fashion brands are, are, are valued at what they are, or people pay $600 for a t-shirt, but people still do. So it really comes down to like supply and demand. And so, you know, I don't know, like as long as there's supply and demand, I guess you can say <laughs> something might be overhyped, but it's really your personal personal opinion at that point, as long as people are buying it. So um, I do think like one thing is, is that in general, like valuations for the altcoins were really kind of crazy in the last cycle. And I think this, this cycle, we have a little bit healthier valuations. Like when I talked to the, the chains and the D apps, the the last two years of kind of this this funky market, they've focused on profitability. They've focused on revenue. I think um, my friends over at Beefy Finance just posted that they have they're a D app. They're a truly decentralized team. They have seven million dollars in their treasury without raising any major source of venture capital. 
And so, you know, protocols like that, like, I, I think, you know, that they, they actually can have a, a, a valuation that um, comes from something substantial because they focused on cash flow, they focused on revenue. So I think, you know, like we probably saw overhyped valuations, but this time coming in, they're a lot more justifi- uh, justifiable. And then how about the uh, institutions and kind of their participation? Do you expect it just to be from a financial exposure standpoint, or do you expect them to uh, start to kind of play um, on chain and, and build things yeah, and, and do right. all that? Well, there's a lot of a lot of people trying to figure out how to tokenize assets right now. And I see that in conversations. I think, I think Anthony, we're kind of at this place where no one wants to get fired for building out like a Web3 app in their in these financial organizations. So they're playing very carefully, but they're they're like slow and steady. They're not getting out of the space. And I think with this latest kind of cycle here, we're going to see that speed up. Got it. Um, if you had to ask people who are coming into the space, what are the things that um, you want to know from them? And I always think about like the questions you ask people signal a lot in terms of what mm. you're thinking about or uh, what you're focused on. So let's say somebody, you know, they had heard of Bitcoin or crypto before and it had all gone down. They thought it was over. Price comes back. Now they're entering the space as a user for the first time. What are some of the questions that you would love to ask them? Yeah. So users coming into the space for the first time. Um, well, generally, I ask them, like, you know, what what's their main goal here? And I think like the answer I continually get is to make money. And that's why I think like at the end of the day, like Web3 and crypto crypto overall, they're very it's it's very capitalistic. Like people are here because they're entrepreneurs or because they're investors or they're trying to make something and, and get more users. And so, you know, I don't know. I, I usually try to ask them like, what are they, what are their financial goals? What are they are they investing? Are they trying to build something? And you know, it goes from there. So I think you have people that kind of sit on the sidelines and they just want to. They want to um, have a chance to be part of kind of the growth of some of these uh, these chains and these dApps and and applications and other people. They're trying to be involved because they're starting a business more or less, and it's a new kind of business that is global and lives on chain. So, um, and then I think you know on on the when I talk to traditional business folks, I want to understand how they're thinking about leveraging this technology how are they looking at reaching new markets are they like a u.s based kind of investment firm that's looking to do more investments internationally and potentially that can be a lot easier what we've seen as we've talked to some of those investors is that tokenized assets makes it easier and easier to do kind of cross-border investment and that's been a really interesting kind of problem space to to evaluate and then what are the pieces of advice or the warnings that you would issue to people entering the space for the first time. And I use that as a proxy for things you've learned having been oh, here man. for a while Jeez. and and gone through many market cycles. Yeah. Man, I guess you have to always do your own research, but I will I will give you my my tips. I think, you know, I think, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, you're looking at um pretty safe investments at this point if you're investing in those, just like a Maybe like a, a company that's been around for a few decades that that has a, um, you know, a, a maybe part of the S and P five hundred or something. These altcoins, I think, you know, you have to be really careful of. And I'm uh, kind of like my some of my friends call me no hype Josh. <laughs> so I think the teams are really smart, and you have to. You can't just what I say when I say that. What I'm meaning is they're really clever at how they're marketing these chains and you really need to like look at not the potential utility but does this chain have developers if you're trying to invest in kind of these altcoins is there on-chain activity again quick note makes this easier with our products right but um you have to kind of just don't look at the marketing narrative look at the utility and is it really happening like are other applications using this protocol and um uh, you know Pretty is also like gas, like gas consumed is a big indicator too. No one's using the chain, don't invest in it. So, you know, I don't know. That's that's one thing. I also look at, you know, one thing I think is a clear indicator, my personal thesis on on investing in the space is when you look at these altcoins, the ones that really invest in the infrastructure side, they're the ones that have the best chance at taking off. And so 
you know, we we do a lot of work at QuickNote at, at integrating new chains. That means that like the chain works with us um, in most cases, pays us to integrate into their platform and we don't take everyone. Right. And so chains that are like, you know, working with the development tooling, those ones have a good chance of succeeding with, with versus ones that are only marketing focused. And so chains that have taken the time to invest in QuickNote and other infra platforms, that is a good indicator. And I do see that being used more and more by investors in the space. Where can we send people to find you on the internet or find out more about QuickNode? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're uh, QuickNode, N-O-D-E dot com. You can find me on Twitter. I just changed my my username to East of e E-T-H, East of ETH. So. East of ETH, do, uh, do you want to explain that for folks yeah. who may not get the reference? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty one, good. Of my, one of my favorite uh, authors, John Steinbeck, who wrote East of Eden, classic stru- you know, human-based struggle in the story. Um, I would kind of always like this idea that like we're trying to build the the perfect utopia, but it can never really be built. Like utopia doesn't exist. And so, you know, we get our our struggle makes makes the world a better place. And so um I spend a lot of my time working on um or working with customers and applications that are building on ETH or auxiliary to ETH. And so I uh, thought thought it was the perfect username for me. And uh if people want to get a job at QuickNote, is the website the best place? You know, I wouldn't say it is. I really am a sucker for a good uh, cold outreach. Um, I love it when well, I'm, not, I'm hiring a product manager right now. So if you're a PM and you're listening to this, you know, hit me up. But I love when people give me a, you know, a two, three page PDF on here's what I can do for you, how it fits into your strategy. And they, you know, something like that. That's probably the best way is a cold outreach. I love it. Well, Josh, I really appreciate the time today. I learned a lot. Obviously, QuickNode continues to uh, to be a great company, uh, one that I've been a longtime supporter of. And uh, I think that, uh, that the bright days are ahead, hopefully. So uh, 100%. We'll, we'll definitely do this again in the future. Sounds good. Thanks, Anthony.